The Overcoat by Jim Poyser, based on the short story by Nikolai Gogol. This is a few years back now. I mean, everyone's heard of Akaki Akakievich after what happened. He's a legend. But when I joined the department, back in 38 it was, everyone just thought he was a weirdo. Big lad he was. Huge, fat stomach. Going bald too. And red in the face all the time. I don't know why. All he ever did was just sit there. Never moved apart from when he went home, whatever that was. I suppose I always felt a bit sorry for him. Not like Colonel Bozov. <sighs> he was our boss. He hated Akaki Akakievich. Still, just goes to show, doesn't it? Everything what goes round, comes round. Hey, Akaki, it's nearly home time. You coming out for a drink? Oh, come off it, Danny Soft. What do you want to ask him for? Don't be like that. Akaki's all right. Yeah, if you want to go down the pub and talk about what type of full scap has the best weft. Don't you mind him, Akaki. You come in a while. Um, I don't think so, Denisov. Drinking's not really my thing, and I've got a lot more copying to do yet. <laughs> Actually, if you wouldn't mind just moving your hand off that promissory note. Don't you get bored of just copying out documents all the time? Bored? I don't know what you mean. Doing copying all the time. Why don't you try and do something a bit different? Different? You mean different from copying? Yes. Like what? Well, see this? This is a completed file. But it needs preparing for another department. Preparing for another department? Yes, Cackers, it's not difficult. All it entails is altering the title page and changing a few verbs from the third person to the first person. Well, what do you say? No, you'd better let me stick to plain copying. I love copying. It's absolutely brilliant. I mean, where would we be without copying? Hey, I heard, what with the Industrial Revolution and everything, that soon there'd be machines that could copy documents. What? What? Who told you that? <laughs> I've been joking. That's not funny. That's all this! I won't have talking! <clears throat> oh, no, it's bars off. Is it you again, Denisov? No, sir, not me, sir. I won't have this insubordination. Do you think you're here to enjoy yourselves? No, sir. We're here to grind out a pitiful living as pen-pushing functionaries of the oppressive and stiflingly bureaucratic Tsarist civil service. That's what I like to hear. A man who's memorised the mission statement. Right, you two, get back to your desks. I want a word with a khaki here. Uh, sir, would it be all right if we nipped off a couple of minutes early? If you don't mind being shot at, you'll wait till six like everyone else. Uh, but we've finished the work, sir. Finished? Do you think there's ever an end to meaningless paper shuffling? Get back to your desks this instant. Yes, sir. All the bloody nerve. Just can't get the staff these days, a khaki. Mind you, they obviously couldn't get the staff when they appointed you either, could they? I wouldn't know about that, sir. I mean, how long is it you've been here now? Well, I feel like I'm only just settling in. But how long? Nineteen years. Nineteen years? In the same department. Have you never thought about moving on, you know, to another department? Another department? What department? How shall I know what department? Just not this one. Well, have you uh, got a problem with my copying? Not as such. It's just... I promised my nephew, Leonid, I'd get him a job. He wants to be a copier. What? Your nephew that came back from the front with his nerves all shot to pieces? Shaking, Leonid. Yeah, those miserable tatter swine. Has it particularly bad in his hands, doesn't he? He can't be a copier. They reckon he'll be out of the sanatorium soon. And I can't turn my dear sister down, can I? But, but, can't you have two copiers? Hmm, it's radical. Of course, were I to be particularly impressed by you, Akaki, over the next few weeks, I might think about it. Impressed? I'm not sure I know how to do that. Well, you better find out, then. Anyway, I can't stand here yapping. I'm due at Tatiana Tushka's titty trailer for a bacchanalia of sumptuous food, fine wine and unguent oils of the Orient. And you? Back home to my tiny cold flat for some very thin soup. Excellent. Good evening, sir. Oh, good evening, Lizavieta. There's some fish gruel left if you want it. I'm afraid the bread's a bit stale. Mmm, fish gruel. Grow my favourite. Oh, sir, look at you. You've got all stuff on your coat again. Stuff? Have people been emptying bins out of the window when you walk past again? Well, I, I can't say I noticed. I've got my mind on my work. Look, there's a bit of potato peel and some chicken bones. 
Actually, do you want me to stick them in with the soup? Yes, good idea. Here, let me just brush your collar down. It's like a little schoolboy you are. I tell you what, sir, how long have you had this coat? This coat? Not that long. Why? I rather think you have had it a long time, sir. I mean, you had it when I first came here. And that's a good 15 years back. Well, I must have got it around then, I suppose. But it's all threadbare, sir. No wonder stuff sticks in it. All these loose fibres. It's perfectly all right. I'm not sure it'll last you another winter. I mean, the lining's falling to pieces as well. It's more like a tatty old dressing gown than an overcoat. Yes, Lizavieta, all right, all right. Can I have some soup now? And the collar's coming off. All right. Oh! There's a bit of potato peel I missed, just by your elbow. Oh, Denisov, have you got a moment? Yeah, as long as Borzov doesn't see me. He's brought his cat of nine tails in specially. Count yourself lucky. He says if I don't impress him, he's going to give me the sack. The sack? He can't do that. You're a permanent fixture. Ah, there's no such thing these days. You're lucky if you get to stay in the same job 20 years. Well... You could smarten yourself up a bit, Akaki. I mean, that might make old bores up a bit more favourably disposed towards you. I mean, that overcoat of yours. Oh, no, not you as well. What's wrong with my overcoat? I've seen old tramps down the Alexander Nevsky Memorial Gardens with better coats. Oh, God. How much do you think a new overcoat will cost me? A couple of hundred. Rubles? Where am I going to get that from? Well, have you got anything valuable? My grandpapa's gold watch. Ah, you can pawn that and do overtime to pay the money back. Six months down the line, you'll have your watch back and a new coat, and you'll impress Borzov by doing all the extra work. But won't my grandpapa object? I said I'd give it him back this week. Hmm. Have you got anything else valuable? So, Lizavieta, I've pawned all the cutlery and the clock. I noticed. I've done us some more gruel, sir. Oh, is it dinner time already? Who knows what time it is? Excuse fingers. Anyway, I can't really stop for dinner. I've got 47 documents to copy tonight. Shall I bring the old brass oil lantern in for you to see by, sir? I'm afraid that had to go too, Lizavieta. But if you could just stand next to me striking matches, that'd be useful. You're in early again, aren't you, Akaki Akakiewicz? Well, sir, there's a lot to get through. Yes, I noticed the overtime sheets. Your name's on virtually every column. Thank you, sir. You know... I'm half-minded to let you keep your job, particularly now Leonid's back at the front. They sent him back? Yes. Aversion therapy, they're calling it. Sounds like a lot of stuff and nonsense to me. What's that on your shoulder? Where, sir? There. Looks like potato peel. What's that doing there? Um, I don't know, sir. You see, just when you're getting into my good books, you spoil it by bringing a load of rotten vegetation into the office. I don't know. What are we going to do about the lower orders? Oh, I don't know, sir. Well, I wouldn't expect you to know. You're one of them. Still, I suppose not everyone can be important. You know I have a medal from the Tsar, don't you? Is that your important person medal, sir? I told you about it, have I? You've mentioned it. Here it is. See the engraving to Colonel Borzov in recognition of his great importance. Sir Nicholas the First. Not every day you see something like this, is it? Well, you show it me nearly every day. You see, you don't get a medal of the Tsar by wearing potato peel epaulets. No, sir. Anyway, I'm sure you've got copying to be getting on with. I shall be in my office, smoking. Very good, sir. I'm really in the swing of it now. <laughs> you don't need two men when you've got one of me. And so it went on. For weeks, Akaki would come into the office early, leave late, and take work home with him. And he'd sit up half the night with his goose quills and his copying paper, and old Lizavieta with her seemingly inexhaustible supply of cooking matches. Summer faded, the misty, damp St. Petersburg autumn came and went, and then, one frosty December morning, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, Akaki Akakiovich appeared at work in his new coat. A khaki, so this is it then. Radishev, everyone, come and look at a khaki, a khaki, oh. new overcoat. It's fantastic. You're embarrassing me now, Denisov. What a good coat. 
What's the collar made out of? Is it Martin? That's what the tailor said people would think. Actually, Radishev, it's cat fur. Is that silk thread? Yes, the tailor threw that in at no extra cost. And what's the lining? Not plain calico, is it? It is, actually, but it's strong, high-quality calico. It looks like silk. My goodness, Akaki, it really is fine. How do you feel? How do I feel? Well, uh, how can I put it? In the past, people have thrown things on me out of windows. What kind of things? Vegetable peelings, mainly. Right at me sometimes. I, I don't know why. Maybe they saw my old coat, my dressing gown, as my landlady called it, and thought, there goes a man with no dignity, with no self-esteem, a man of no importance. In short, the kind of man I want to throw some vegetable peelings on. But today... I strode through the city like someone with purpose in my new coat and not one person threw a single thing at me. Bravo! You know, I'm not even sure about copying anymore. I mean, copying has its place, but maybe the real skill is in editing a piece of text. Hey! Hey! Akake, I can barely believe my ears. I think this calls for a celebratory drink. What, here? Borsoff will shoot you in the face if he sees you drinking. No, no, not here. At my house. Tonight. A party. A party in honour of Akakia Kakiewicz's fantastic new overcoat. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Right, Lizavieta, I've been invited to a party. You're jesting me. Why? What's so odd about that? You've never been invited to a party in all the time I've been with you. Oh, God, uh, what to do? I've no idea how to behave or what to wear. Well, you must wear your new coat, of course. Well, that goes without saying. What time is it? Don't ask me. You pawned the clock. Damn. If only I'd not given Grandpapa his watch back as well, I'd better get my skates on. Denisov lives in Viborg. Viborg? That's miles. How are you going to get to Viborg? Well, I, I walk. You'll wear your shoes out. They're looking pretty ropey as it is. God, there's no pleasing some people, is there? You go on about my coat, so I'll get a new one. And then what? You start having a go at my shoes. Haven't you got some gruel to prepare or something? Well, I suppose I could go and add a bit of water to last night. I'm obviously no use for anything else. Oh, don't be like that, Elisabetta. You know how much I value you. Not just your service, but your friendship. Can I come to the party with you, then? No. Come on, come on. I thought you'd never get here. Well, I had to walk, didn't I? Walk? It's freezing out. But then you have your overcoat, don't you? <laughs> Come on. Can I get you a drink? Uh, no, thanks. I'm not much of a drinker. Well, um, how about a cigar? I don't really smoke. I don't suppose you gamble either. Thought it was illegal. Well, we're not going to play in the lobby of the police station, are we? I've never been one for cards. OK. How about I introduce you to a very good friend of mine, Tamara Tushka. She is the niece of the famous Tatiana Tushka, you know. A lady? I'm not sure about that. Nonsense! Tamara, come over here. Meet Akakia Kakievich. Hello. Fetch me another vodka, Denisov, will you? <laughs> another one? You don't mess about Tamara, do you? So, Akaki, is this the famous coat? Ah, uh, no. Mm, Denisov told me you got a new coat. Oh, no, no. This is just an old one. Oh. He told me you were coming here to show off your new coat. In fact, he said the party was in honour of your new coat. Oh, a new coat? Hi, what did you think I'd said? Oh, sorry, it's, it's a bit loud here. Yeah. And you're going to take it off? Take what off? Your coat. Well, I'm, I'm not sure. Come on, I'll help you. What are you doing? Just helping you off with your coat. Well, why? Why are you stroking my chest? Do you know, Akaki, you're not so bad looking, really. And they said you were a big fat lump, but I think you've got a nice face. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm doing my coat back up. Brr, cold. You don't look cold. You're sweating. There's no need to be nervous. I won't eat you. Eat me? What do you mean? Come on, Akaki. Relax. Hmm? Have a drink. You got a lady friend. A lady friend? Hmm? No, no, I haven't. What's the matter? Do you not like ladies? No, it's not that. No, I, I haven't really got any gentleman friends either. There's a few things me and the girls could do for you, you know. What, what kind of things? Well, the services. 
personal services. What, like like cooking in that? I've already got to cook old uh, Lisavietta. <laughs> I bet there's a few things old Lisavietta doesn't do for you. What, like sewing, cleaning? Ah, oh, she does all that. She even turns her hand to plumbing in the winter. There's uh, other things. Well, uh, her back's not what it used to be. I suppose you could muck in, carrying the privy buckets down to the septic tank. You're not much of a romantic, are you? What gave you that idea? I will give you a few lessons in the arts of love. Oh, oh, she stuck her tongue in my ear. She stuck her tongue in my ear. That's disgusting. Oh, forget it, then. Denisov, where's my vodka? I thought he said he might want a good time. Well, I, I thought he might. What did you go and do that for? Do what? A faint tomorrow. There's people would die to get into Tatiana's titty trailer. Famous for miles around it is, but you've done it now. I just hope you haven't blown it for me. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise she was... A... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I feel a bit light-headed. Have you got anything sweet? Like a sugared rusk? I offer him Tamara Tushka, and all he wants is a sugared rusk. Yeah, sure. And a khaki. Take your coat off, for God's sake. He didn't take his coat off, though. Not that he stayed that long. Stood in the corner, sweating in his overcoat, nibbling on a sugared rusk. I forgot all about him, to be honest. And then, when the card tables came out, I went to look for him. And he'd gone. No sign of him. Come on, Akaki. Not far to go now. Now, where are we? Bottom of Shredney Prospect? Well, just the other side of the cemetery, then. Only another couple of miles. Oh, it's cold. Thank the Lord for my new coat. Made a new man of me, it has. Oh, that's a joke. Look at me. Running away. Always running away. Oh, that Tamara. She was lovely. <laughs> Mustn't get depressed. Keep walking. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Got the time on you. Have you? Have you? I'm sorry, no, I haven't got a watch. Wanna buy one? I've got loads. So, why were you asking me the time? To see if you had a watch. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, five rubles. I haven't got any money on me. Four rubles. Look, look at the quality. Oh, I'll take your word for it, but I must be going. Three rubles, fifty kopecks, my final offer. I told you, I haven't got any... Don't money. try and pull the wool over my eyes. Nice coat like that. You must be doing all right. I had to save for months to get this coat. Yeah, I bet you did. Ooh, nice bit of cloth, that. Very nice. <laughs> uh, tell you what, let's do a swap. A swap? Get your coat for one of my watches. Get lost. No need to be like that. It's quality workmanship, this watch. Swiss. Really? Yeah, look. Says it on the back. Yong Chong Pang Pok. Yeah, well, Swiss Chinese. <laughs> Come on! Off with your coat. I've got to go. Oh, no, you don't, sunshine. Hey, Daraslav, right on, get oh, over hey, here. Hey, hey, you're robbing me. You're robbing Get off. Come back here. Get off. Come on. No, no, Give us no, that no, coat. No, please, please. Not the coat. No, I'll do anything. Any. Shut it. All right, lads, let's go. Um, come back, please. Come back with my coat. Excuse me. What do you want? Are you a policeman? What does it look like? I'm in a police box with a policeman's uniform on. I mean, how much more obvious do I need to make it? You've been sleeping. What gives you that idea? Well, a hammock's a bit of a giveaway. Oh, God, this is hopeless. You're all right. Calm down. What's happened? It's ruined. Everything's ruined. You look all right to me. I've just been robbed. Three men. They stole my overcoat. Uh, yes, well, these things happen. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you go out walking with your overcoat on. Well, of course. It's the middle of winter. That's the prime overcoat nicking season, I'm afraid. So you're not going to do anything about it? Not much I can do, is there? They could be miles away by now. And how do I know you even had an overcoat? <laughs> but my overcoat, I'll freeze. You can get another one. Oh, I can't. You don't understand. It's hopeless. Everything's completely hopeless. Oh, come on now. There's no need to be like this. Here, come on inside my sentry hut. I've got a bag of peppermints. Just the thing for a cold night like this. No, they're not. An overcoat's just the thing. If you had a bag of overcoats, that'd be a different matter. You know, there's really not much I can do. I mean, 
Even if I knew who got your overcoat. It's all down to influence, you know. What are you talking about? It's not what you know, it's who you know. I'm sorry, I don't understand. My cousin Dimitri lost his horse, but because he knew the mayor's cousin, Clip Clop, back in no time. But you're a policeman. Catching thieves is your job. If only it was that simple. What you need is to find someone important. Better than that. Someone very important. And they'll have your caught back before you can say Arkady Petrovich. Someone important. Right. Colonel Borsov! Colonel Borsov! Wake up! Please! Who the bloody hell is it? Please, sir! Please! I, I beg you! Open up! Who is it? Who's there? It's me, sir! Do I know you? Yes, sir. It's Akaki Akakievich. Who? From the office. I've worked in your office the last 19 years. Oh, uh, yes, yes, I vaguely recognise you. What do you want? I've been robbed, sir. They took my new overcoat. What do you want me to do about it? Well, I thought, sir, with your influence, you being... Very important and everything. Oh, yes, yes, I, I am important. I'm glad you picked up on that. The, the policeman said you might be able to help me. Policeman? Had a brush with the law, Akakievich? Oh, and you want me to bail you out, I suppose? No, sir, no, it's not like that, sir. And you think waking me up at God knows what time's going to help you, do you? Could I come in, sir? I'm freezing. God sense, big lad like you. You've got plenty of blubber to keep you warm. Good night, sir. But, Your Excellency, aren't you going to help me? Help you? I've a good mind to fire you on the spot. My nephew's back from the front, you know, and he's so hardened by battle he doesn't shake anymore. Doesn't do anything much, actually. Just stares fixedly. Ideal for copying. In fact, you're the one who's shaking. It's the cold, sir. Well, you'd better get home to your bed, then. I shall expect you in the office, especially early tomorrow, Akakievich, to make up for this disgraceful behaviour. But, sir, sir, I'll freeze, sir! I'll freeze. The next morning, there was no sign of Akaki in the office. And that was after seven and a half thousand days uninterrupted service. Something was up. He didn't come in the next day either. Or the next. And then I got the message from his landlady. I went straight to Borzov. Ah, uh, Denisov. Finished labelling the paper clips already? I've done the first three trunk loads, but that's not important. How can you say that? Well, it's a khaki, a khaki of Oh, don't talk to me about that ass. Came to my house, he did, in the middle of the night. Yeah, well, well, he's dead, sir. Like I said, he came over the other night. Great to see him it was. <laughs> Came in, had some nice wine, a few nibbles, played with the kids. <laughs> and he had his overcoat then. Uh, hadn't been stolen then. Must have been stolen afterwards when he left. And I begged him to stay. We were having such a good time. Hmm. That's not quite how I heard it from his landlady. You won't tell anyone, will you? I'll get you a promotion. Titular Councillor Denisov, how does that sound? Tell you what, forget labelling the paper clips. In fact, throw them out! I've never really known what they were for anyway, silly newfangled things. And take the afternoon off. Just don't tell anyone, Denisov. Don't tell anyone what I did. So that was that. Me and Radishev went along to the funeral and paid our respects. And afterwards, life carried on as normal. But then, a couple of weeks later... The sightings began. Rumours suddenly started going around St. Petersburg that a ghost in the form of a government clerk had been seen near the Kalinkin Bridge and that this ghost appeared to be searching for a lost overcoat. Apparently, it was going around ripping all kinds of overcoats from everyone's shoulders. Coats made from cat fur, beaver, Quilted overcoats, raccoon, fox, bear, all sorts. And then, one of the clerks from our own department who lived down there saw the ghost with his own eyes and immediately recognised it as Akaki Akakievich. The papers got hold of it, and suddenly Akaki's name was on everyone's lips. 
Meanwhile, Colonel Borzov was a changed man. Stopped bossing everyone about, just sat in his office all day long with the door tight shut. Like he was afraid. Like he was afraid of something terrible. Borzov. Borzov. Who is it? Go away. I've come for you, Borzov. Open the door. Never. Get lost. How did you do that? <gasps> It's you. What do you want? I want your overcoat. Here. Take it. No, not that one. That nice one hanging up there with a furry collar. Very well, there. Is that it? And your medal? What? My very important person medal? You can't have that. Go on, hand it over. Oh, all right then. Here you are. Is that it? Have you got any sugared rusks? How many do you want? Couple of dozen? And with that, he was gone. And by all accounts, he never came back. A bit like Colonel Bozov, actually. He went and joined a monastery. Renounced all his worldly goods he did. House, job, the lot. Actually, that was good news for me because I got on the promotion fast track and now I'm head of the department. Things are different here now. In respect to Akaki's memory, I set up an overcoat fund for anyone too skint to buy a coat. And of course, Akaki's desk remains forever empty in his honour. I've had a little plaque made, in fact. Stuck it on the back of his old chair. It says, Here sat the legendary Akaki Akakiovich, who for one day only, owned the finest overcoat in St. Petersburg. I think he'd like that. Akaki was played by Stephen Moore, Kabolikov by Mark Chatterton, Denisov by David Krelin, and Borzov by Russell Dixon. Tamara was played by Joanne Knowles, Radishev by Malcolm Rayburn and Lisa Vieta by Bridget Forsyth. The Overcoat by Jim Poyser was based on the short story by Nikolai Gogol and produced in Manchester. <laughs>